Hello everyone, we are going to do example 11.2.1 which is on page 93 in your class notes but with a modification where there is a bypass stream added as you can see in the diagram here. So the problem statement is the same, you are reacting nitrogen and hydrogen to form ammonia but you also have that the mixer in stream G, which is this mixer over here, can only take 100 kilograms per hour from the feed in F. So if, it is, if the feed F is too big, then the bypass is used and it is bypassed to the outlet stream H here. And what you are given is that you are feeding 150 kilomoles per hour fresh feed F. Then you also know that the reactor has a 25% conversion and that in the fresh feed there is nitrogen, hydrogen and also argon which is an inert contaminant which is why we have a purge stream over here so that there is no build up of argon in the process. So all the argon that comes in in F must go out in the purge. So the argon that comes in is 2%. Then nitrogen and hydrogen is fed stoichiometrically. So you can actually do a balance there to find out how much hydrogen and nitrogen is fed. So we can do that quickly. We know that we have a total of 150 kilomoles an hour. So I'm going to choose my basis as one hour. So if my total feed is 150 kilomoles, 2% of that is argon. So we have three kilomoles of argon. Then the rest, so 150 minus three, is nitrogen and hydrogen. So since they're fed stoichiometrically, we can look at the chemical reaction, which is N2 plus 3H2 goes to 2NH3. So if I had one kilomole of nitrogen, I would need three kilomoles of hydrogen. So I have in total one plus three, so four parts. And one of those parts is nitrogen. And three of those four parts is hydrogen, if I were to just add them together. So using that same ratio, since we are feeding stoichiometrically, we can use a quarter times 147 to find the nitrogen. And the rest, or three quarters of the 147, is hydrogen. So now I know what's going on in stream F. But before I can carry on, I need to check whether I have to use the bypass or not. So we know that this G is only allowed to be a thousand kilograms per hour total or with our basis of one hour, a thousand kilograms total. 
So we need to check, is this 150 kilomoles greater or smaller than 1,000 kilograms? So we need to do a conversion. So I'm just going to do it here. You multiply each component with its molar mass. So for argon, we have 120 kilograms. Because the molar mass of argon is 40. And then you can do the same for nitrogen and hydrogen, multiply by their molar mass. And then you can add them up. And you will find that the total is 1369,5 kilograms, which is greater than 1,000 kilograms. So we need the bypass. Now, 1,000 of these kilograms can go into G, and the rest must go into B. So F is B plus G. So I know that whatever doesn't go into G needs to go into B for each component. So we know that B is 369,5 kilograms total. Now, the other thing that we also know is that the composition of B, G, and F are all the same because it is simply a split in the stream. So nothing funny happens to the compositions. They are all the same. So there are multiple ways that you can do this. The way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to get the mass percentages of nitrogen, hydrogen, and organ in F, and then use that for B as well. So I'm using the kilograms of nitrogen over the total kilograms. multiplying by 100. And doing the same for hydrogen. And there you have all the mass percentages. So those, that composition is the same for B. So now we can then find out what is happening. And because I want to work with chemical reactions, I want to go back to kilomoles. So I divide by the molar mass of nitrogen. And then we do the same for hydrogen.
And finally for organ as well. So now I know what the composition of B is in terms of killer moles as well. So I can just fill it in. And I also know the composition of G because I can subtract the nitrogen in B from the nitrogen in F to get the nitrogen in G and do that for all three components. Because G is F minus B and that counts for all the components as well. So I now have all the information for G as well. Because in the end, we need to know what is happening at the purge and at D. So we have to work our way all the way there. So at the mixer, we are adding the recycle stream to G to get A. So A is R plus G but we don't yet know anything about G. But what we do know is that the organ did not react. So the organ here in A goes all the way through to the organ in D, because the condenser only lets NH3 out in E, and the rest all goes to D. The organ, nitrogen, and hydrogen go to D. So this is a very good condenser. So we know all the organ went from A to C to D. So we can do an organ balance. Another thing to keep in mind for this organ balance that we're going to do is that they give us that the feed to the reactor may contain a maximum of 12% organ. So this feed to the reactor A is 12% organ. So if we come back to this, we can find some information about this equation. We actually know what G is already because we can add up these values. And that is 109,53 kilomoles total. So A is 109,53 plus R. Then we also know that the organ in A is 12% of A. And as we discussed, the organ in D 
is equal to the organ in C, which is equal to the organ in A, which is still that 0 0.12 times A. So, but if we now put these two together, 12% of A is then 0 0.12 times this 109,53 plus R. Now we're still stuck with two unknowns, A and R. So we are going to do an overall organ balance next. So we know that the organ coming out here is the same as the organ that came in from this stream G. Now the reason it's G and not F is because some of the organ in F actually went into H over here. There is still some organ over there because of that bypass stream. So all the organ that started inside the process went all the way out here, out here, and some of it went into P and the rest went into R. So we know the composition of G. We know that 2% of G is organ. So that's the organ in and we don't know what the composition of that purge stream is. So we're going to make it an unknown. So we're going to say let x be the fraction of the organ in the purge stream P. So the organ in P is equal to the fraction, which is unknown, times p. Now, as we said, the organ in must equal the organ out. So the organ in at g must equal the organ in p. But we know what this is. We know that is 2,19. So now we still have too many unknowns, so we will need more equations. But something to keep in mind is that this over here is a split. It doesn't do anything funny like the condenser that changed composition. A split does not change composition. So the composition of D is the same as for P, is the same as for R. So if X is the fraction of organ in P, X is the fraction of organ in D, and in R. So we can say organ in D is X times D, because the fraction is the same. Then the next thing that we can look at is to go back to A, to the rest of A, because we know that 12% of A is organ and the rest, so 100 minus 12%, 88% of A is nitrogen and hydrogen. So we can fill this in, 88% of A is 88% again of that 109,53 plus R. Now A is what goes into the reactor. And we know that there is 25% conversion in that reactor. So 25% of the nitrogen 
is fed or is converted. And because they are fed stoichiometrically, 25% of the hydrogen is also converted. So we are left with 75% that did not react. So 25% conversion to 75% into an H2 still come out in C and reacted. So of this 88%, 75% is still left. So 75% of 0.88A is in C. So we can also substitute it into this one. So that's the nitrogen and hydrogen in C, and we also know what organ is in C because the organ in A is equal to the organ in C. So the total gas in C is this. So this is the N2 plus H2. Then we also need the hydrogen. And then also the NH3. So now this might actually introduce another unknown, but only if we keep looking at C, because what happens if we go through the condenser is we get rid of all the NH3 into E and we are only left with the gases, organ, nitrogen and hydrogen. So we know what is going on in B now. D is nitrogen and hydrogen, so that's 75% times what came in. and the hydrogen, which is 12% of A, and A is 109,53 plus R. So we have got rid of this by looking at stream D. So just to show, this is N2 plus H2, and this is organ. So now remember, we've also found the mole fraction in D of organ. It is the same as the mole fraction in P, which we got here. So the mole fraction organ in D is X, which is the same as in P and R, and mole fraction is the organ over the total. So it is, here's the organ. Over this total, which I'm just going to simplify. So this is the simplified version. And we can see that this cancels out. So I actually already have a value for x, which is 0 0.1538. 
So now that I have x, I can go back and put it into this 2,19 is equal to x times p and solve for the total of p. So now I am a bit closer to finally finding what uh, the percentage of D is that leaves in the purge because we have the value for purge. So now we need to work out what D is. Now for D, we will need to use R because D is still written in terms of R. If you go back here, we have several unknowns, A and R being some of them. So we first need to work back again. So as we had A is equal to R plus G, we still have this. This unknown R. But I know that the organ composition is still the same as in D and P. So if I look at the organ, that is my X value that I calculated. Then G has the organ 2.19, and that is the organ in A, which is, again, 12% of this. So now I have one unknown that I can solve for. And you will find that R is 324,07 kilomoles. Now that I have R, I can actually finally get D because D is P plus R. So I know what P is and I now know what R is. And now I can answer that first question, the percentage purged of D is P over D times 100 and that is 4,2% is purged. Now we can do question B, where they ask for the overall conversion in the process. So we need to know how much NH3 we get out here in the final stream H. And for that, we need information surrounding the reactor. So we need to know how much nitrogen and hydrogen there is in A that converted to ammonia. So we still know that since 12% of A is organ, 88% of A is nitrogen and hydrogen. That is still true. And we also know that this is then 0 0.88 times 109.53 plus the Recycle, which we now know to be 324,07. So the nitrogen and hydrogen in A is 381,57 kilomoles. 
Now, remember that they were fed stoichiometrically. So of this total, as we did before, the nitrogen and hydrogen are in a one to three ratio. So there are four parts. And one of those four parts is N2. So it is a quarter of the total, which is 95,39 kilomoles. And the H2 is three quarters of the total. So now we know how much we fed to the reactor. And we also know that 25% of the nitrogen and hydrogen were converted. 25% conversion. So we can say, okay, 25% of the N2 was used. And that is 23,85. So if you go back to the chemical reaction, for every one kilomole of N2, two kilomoles of ammonia form. So if we used 23.85 kilomoles of N2, twice as much ammonia formed. And that is 47,7 kilomoles. And what is left then exits the stream in C. And now we also know that the NH3 in the stream is 47,7 kilomoles. So that stream is now known. And for conversion, we need what could possibly have been produced which is the total, and now we already have what actually happened. So we need to find out what possibly could have happened. Now for that, it would have been 100% conversion, and because it's the overall conversion, it is based on the feed F. So in the feed F is if all the nitrogen and hydrogen converted to NH3. So we know what F is. So just to remind ourselves, we had 36.75 kilomoles N2 and 110.25 kilomoles H2. So again, if we reacted 36.75 kilomoles N2, which is the maximum possible that could have reacted, we would have formed twice as much ammonia. So the possible ammonia is two times that 36.75, which is 73,5 kilomoles, which means the percentage conversion is what actually happened, so that 47,7 over what could have happened, which is 73,5 times 100, and you get a conversion overall of 65%.